We continue driving to the west, towards that mythical place in RV land called Quartzite, along the back roads of the Lone Star State, and two national parks, Carlsbad Caverns and White Sands. Buckle up, because the adventure continues. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Cause I'm free in my RV. Yeah. Now we're gonna have pretty much an all day drive. Uh, all the way to West Texas and, um, and we're gonna take the back roads let's just see what it looks like on the back roads of Texas let's take some of the back roads like this one by Lake Worth amazing things are waiting to be discovered once you get off the interstate One good thing about Texas highways is they have a lot of these picnic areas. I don't see any signs, so I assume you could potentially overnight at one of these. Let's go a bit brunch at the picnic area. I'm uh, sauteing some mushrooms, some broccoli and some uh, cauliflower. And then we're gonna scramble some eggs and... That's what I'm gonna call it. Brunch at the picnic area. Well, here we go, did some frozen onions and, um, and you know, added some spices to the egg and uh, I think it's gonna be good. Mm, bon appetit. Well, there are some interesting things. It is just a long way across Texas. The landscape dotted by oil derricks, abandoned structures, windmills, we drive across small towns like Olney, Texas here. Grass-fed cattle, lots of them. And contrary to popular belief, not all of it is flat. Actually, a lot of it is flat. By the way, we have pretty strong headwinds, so this is probably the worst fuel economy I've ever had. Oh yeah, according to the app, you get between 15 and 20 mile per hour winds, but headwinds made straight from the west. No wonder, no wonder we're getting such crappy mileage, but it is what it is. We're approaching Monday, I believe after that we'll be in Knox City and then, well, Eventually, we'll, we're gonna stay somewhere in, in western Texas. Alright, bathroom break. City it's starting to look like the desert. Yeah, rolling hills, juniper all over the place. Driving to the west, into the sunset. Driving to the west. Driving to the west, into the sunset. Driving to the west. Driving to the west, into the sunset. I'm glad we found this gas station because we're running on fumes here. It is entirely automated. Mm. 
Ooh, it's windy out there. This has got to be by probably by far one of the most remote gas stations. I mean, it's not only out of Maine. I don't think they have anybody here. And um, it's weird. Uh, I mean, we were running really low. Uh, we, you know, I, I forgot to put gas in Knox City, and, uh, and we're doing six miles per gallon with this 20 mile an hour headwind. So it is what it is. We'll put. We'll make sure to to, to refuel often. All right. Let's take one final break here. Oh no, that's not a good sign. Am I the only one who finds this barren landscape really alluring? Let's stop here real quick because, well, it is here. It is a replica of Jesus Christ's tomb. It is one of those remote roadside attractions and since we're here, I heard that back in 2016 it was set on fire, but I'm glad they have restored it. Even though I am not an overly religious person, I have a special appreciation for places like this. Well, yeah, this is one of those things that I either heard about or, or, or saw it uh, on another YouTube video. But yeah, it's a, it's a apparently Bible accurate replica of Jesus Christ's tomb. Right here in the middle of nowhere, Texas. Anyway, let's, let's find the campsite for tonight and uh, tomorrow we continue driving to the west. Here we are at Coleman Park here in Brownfield, Texas, Western Texas, and uh, it appears to be free. We have a f a power, 30 amp, and uh, there's a dump station, portable water, and uh, let's see, they have cer certain rules, and uh, Coleman RV Park here, five day limit, per pets allowed on leash, donations accepted, appreciated, I mean, so, um, yeah, I might consider uh, giving them a donation because, I mean, it's not bad. Yeah. Well, we're going to spend the night here and, uh, and tomorrow we continue driving to the west uh, into New Mexico. We've got some Florida snapper here, so let's cook ourselves some dinner. Some New Orleans Cajun seasoning and we're going to melt some butter and steam some broccoli and cauliflower. I'm going to slice half an onion. On the other side, I'm just going to do some salt and black pepper. I'm going to mince some garlic as well. Oh, look at that. That is some delicious blackened snapper.
That looks delicious. Let's eat. On the road again. And let me tell you, for a quick overnight, this was totally adequate. The infrastructure is a little dated, a little, you know, in disrepair, but I mean, it is what it is. I see the familiar sign coming up. Welcome to New Mexico. Oh, thank you. The land of enchantment. I'm driving through New Mexico, Arizona, even California. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my kids on 66. The mountains and the desert are my fix. I'm driving to the west in my RV is where I wanna be. And here we are, once again, we've made it to Carlsbad Caverns National Park in New Mexico. So, let's go in. Hello, little bird! I was here once before, and to me, this is the most beautiful cavern, both in quality and quantity of rock formations, and the variety, almost like putting all the other caverns together in one place. You can either hike down or take the elevator 750 feet deep into the Earth's crust. Filming inside the caverns is a little bit of a challenge, because they keep them pretty dark. On purpose, I suppose. And the camera will never do justice to a place like this. And we have reached the big room. It is a fun exercise to look for familiar shapes in the rock formations. The lens is incapable of capturing the true sheer size of this place. That's the ladder originally used by one of the early explorers.
it is overwhelming. The whole underground hike is about a mile and a quarter, and it has been called the Grand Canyon, with a roof over it. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better, there's more and more in these smaller rooms. I wonder what beauties are yet to be discovered in the dark crevices of the cave. I'm telling you, it's like they gathered all the rock formations from every cave in the world and they put them here on display in one place, like a cave museum if you will. In typical National Park fashion, there's a detailed raised relief map of the cave. One of the main things to do here is the Dawn of the Bats, which happens seasonally every day at dawn and you get to see hundreds of thousands of bats returning to the caverns. We may get to do that someday, but cameras are not allowed. Well, Carlsbad Caverns here never disappoints. I've never done the bat thing, you know, when you see all the bats coming out of the cave. Um, maybe next time uh, we'll stay a couple of nights in the area and explore even more. But they don't let you film the, the bats, so... But in any case, let's uh, continue exploring this area of New Mexico. Let's see where we can go next. The sun's coming out, and it looks like it might be a beautiful day, but don't be fooled by that. There's a slight chance of rain, even snow. We'll see. In goes the slide. Hmm, interesting clouds. We're going to continue driving west and the only concern is some rain, although the weather pattern seems to be a little unpredictable this afternoon. And we have to cross the Sacramento Mountains at Cloudcroft. I've heard that at high elevation rain can turn into snow, but I don't see anything on the weather app or the Doppler radar, so we're gonna take it one mile at a time. I wish there was an app that combined navigation with weather. The idea is to spend the night at Alamo Gordo, so tomorrow we can visit White Sands National Park, which we've also been there before, but there's a trail that I want to do. We've been going north on US 285, and here in Artesia we're going to take US 82 West. Here's one of several bronze statues, this one called Trail Boss. The statue coming up is called the Vaquero, which is Spanish for cowboy. It is a pretty good looking downtown, with the requisite Art Deco theater, of course. We are now in the land of the Yucca Cactus, the Chihuahuan Desert. I do not like the look of those clouds up ahead. It looks ominous. I see mountains in the distance. And the rain has begun. Oh no, it's getting worse. 
Rain is turning into sleet. And what is that white stuff on the ground? I guess today we're going to put Starship with its off-road tires and four-wheel drive to the test, as the front camera gets covered in ice. We're climbing up to a village called Cloudcraft. Population 674, elevation 8,676 feet or 2,644 meters. No wonder we got snow. I had no idea we were gonna get this high. It is a winter wonderland. We even have snow plows standing by. It looks like a place where we could spend some time with better weather and more time. They have some restaurants, a brewery, and maybe one day I can even learn how to ski or snowboard, or maybe not. That's it for Cloudcraft. Now for the long descent. There are many signs warning about the upcoming 6% grades and I've never driven in snow, so I'll be extra careful and go super slow. On the way down, we get heavier precipitation and I know this is nothing, but it is my first time, so I'm freaking out a little bit here. Eventually, as we descend, snow turns back into rain, black ice now being my biggest concern. Beautiful scenery here on the west side. I want to return someday with better weather. But right now, we're on a mission. We're going to overnight at the Walmart in Alamogordo Tomorrow, we're gonna spend a few hours at White Sands, and then it is quartzite or bust. This is where we're gonna call it. It's gotta be one of the Walmarts with the best views. It's a brand new day, let's fill up at the Walmart Murphy gas station and continue. Let me tell you something, I like this uh, Walmart uh, gas stations, Murphy, Murphy Express, the market there. They're relatively, generally they're very inexpensive, I'm like, I mean Buck is inexpensive, and uh, they ask you all the questions beforehand, like, would you like a receipt? Would you like this and that? Boom. So when you finish fueling, that's it. You put the, the thing back, you know, the, the, the pump and the nozzle back in the pump and you go. And then you press them on camera. Uh, we're going to White, White Sands National Park. That's the next stop. We 
can already see the sand dunes in the distance. This is a national park, so the America the Beautiful annual pass will get us in for free. The last time I was here in 2018, it was still a national monument and the visitor center was still under renovations. Fun historical fact, on July 16, 1945, the White Sands Missile Range, just north of here, was the site of the first ever nuclear weapon detonation, nicknamed the Gadget. The trail I wanna do today will take us to Alkali Flat, the boundary of that missile range. We skipped breakfast, so it is time for another RV cooking show. Okay, we're gonna let it boil for about an hour or so, and then we'll do the sofrito. We're making some shredded chicken, and since we're going to be here for a few hours, I'm going to set up Starlink, or Pelistar as I like to call it, and in about an hour we'll shred the chicken, eat it, and then we'll do the hike. Yeah, I forgot to turn off the rooftop GoPros. We're going to start by chopping an onion, a large white onion, also green pepper. This time we're going to use avocado oil and start by sauteing those onions. Salt, black pepper. I'm going to start smashing some garlic, move it around a little bit and get rid of whatever that is, and add the green peppers to the mix, and continue peeling my garlic. Hmm, this is going to be so good. Next, we'll mince the garlic. I'm going to get my chicken so I can start shredding it. Start sauteing the garlic. I'm gonna start uh, shredding the chicken. Actually, Ili is going to help me finish with that while I add some more salt and pepper. And now is when it's gonna get really good. We're going to add some garlic stuffed olives. It would normally be pimento stuffed manzanilla olives, but this is what we have. And vino seco cooking wine. A little bit of marinara sauce, no sugar added. Smoked paprika, lots of smoked paprika. Oregano, a dash of cumin, and just for fun, I'm gonna add a little bit of cayenne pepper, just to give it a little kick, and basil. And at this point, I'm just making it up as I go along. Now we'll add the chicken and mix it all up real good, salt to taste, and this is ready. Normally, you would eat it with white rice, but we're watching our carbs. Let's dig in. And today, for real, it is lunch with a view. Well, isn't this an amazing place? And uh, ever, since I was, ever since I was here back in 2018, I wanted to do this trail that we're gonna do now. I think it's called the Aquila Flats. So um, let's get on it. Look at that, it looks... Yesterday we saw real snow, but today this almost looks like snow. And uh, might as well be, it is, it is cold. And with this wind, uh, the wind chill is probably in the 30s. You know, trail markers are in red and I'm just gonna do three hours. We, we may not do the whole three hours. We might at the one hour mark, we'll just turn around. And I've got my old trails app, so uh, that way I won't get lost. There we go. And in case of a real emergency, I have my my Garmin, you know, just in case. Alcali Flat. Did I say Aquila Flat earlier? That, that is something else, actually, that we're going to see later today. <laughs> this is Alcali, Alcali Flat, which is, I believe, the material out of which it's, all, all these sand dunes are made. 
This is actually 98% gypsum sand, and it is supposed to be pretty rare, it being water-soluble. And I don't know if you can tell, but this sand is super fine. It, it almost feels like, <clears throat> and it has like, it shines. It's, uh, it's this material. It almost looks that, like the sand in, in Destin, Florida, actually. It's that fine, fine, fine sand. And um, look at that, with the, with the dark skies behind us, it's, uh, it's quite a sight. Yep, we're surrounded by sand dunes. Completely surrounded. Whew. This is a surreal experience. But you look at this. It doesn't feel like this kind of landscape can exist in the United States. I imagine being in the Sahara, perhaps. And I'm glad the trail is well marked, because it would be very easy to lose one's bearings at a place like this. that be like an oasis? That was a tough one. tell you look at that I almost almost feel like Lawrence of Arabia here in the middle of this desert so look at that it's like and don't worry I brought plenty of water and I've got this thing I'm not gonna get lost out here I'm just trying to reassure myself here I hope you can hear me with all this wind and I believe that we have reached the famed Alkali Flat. I think this is it. Yep, that installation looks conspicuously military, but let's walk all the way to the end. supposed to go any farther that way huh I bet you that's some secret military uh, uh, installation back there actually I believe I believe it was somewhere on here where they detonated the, the first atomic bomb ever right all right we're gonna jog our way back no <laughs> that's not gonna work is it oh gosh I'm full of sand. One thing to note is, the trailhead sign really overestimates how long it takes to do this hike at 3 hours. 
and the old Rails app greatly underestimates it at one and a half hours. I think it is going to be just under two after all is said and done. I just can't get tired of that surreal landscape. Well, here goes another one. Down we go. Woo! <laughs> You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> I guess this is gonna be more the norm. Oh gosh. <laughs> this is a steep one. I'm sinking. Whoa, I'm definitely sinking. Here we go again. Let's try to take it slow this time, maybe. There's no taking it slow. Here we have some people in the distance for scale. What can I say? This has been an awesome trail. I mean, we're almost there. A little longer than I expected. A little, definitely a little longer than, than the old trails uh, estimate, but shorter than the trailhead sign. The trailhead sign said three hours. I was like, mm, maybe I'll do it. Uh, it's been a little under two hours and I can see the trailhead already. So, but, but look at this. I mean, this is like, Extraordinary. I'm gonna say this is definitely top 10, if not top 5. Whoa, one other, another one piece. Of all the trails I've ever done. I mean, definitely. It's uh, it's not extremely long or extremely strenuous. It's about, about two hours. And uh, you get to see landscape like this and you get to really feel, I mean, it's, it's heavily trafficked. I see people all over, but you definitely feel like you are kind of out here in the middle of, of this desert. You know, as I said, I feel like, like Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia all of a sudden. I'm really glad I decided to do the, the whole thing. This is it, we've made it back. Well, that was awesome, as, as you witnessed, uh, almost. Almost bucket list, but uh, this was not bucket list, but it was uh, definitely a very nice hike. Now, driving to the west, into the sunset, almost to Arizona. Enjoy the ride. I see a northbound border patrol checkpoint, which only means we're probably going to see another one once we pass Las Cruces. Every highway will have one of those once you get within a certain number of miles from the border.
We're taking US 70 across the St. Augustine Pass and down to Las Cruces, where we're going to join Interstate 10 towards Arizona. Here's that other border patrol checkpoint, but there's no one here. Let's refuel here in Aquila Flats, which in hindsight, we should have done it in Las Cruces. It was way cheaper there. I wonder what's going on here. It looks like half of the Las Cruces police department is here. Crossing the Continental Divide at what is probably the most anticlimactic spot. Well, we're gonna get there at night, which is not my favorite way to do it, but we'll figure it out. It's gonna freeze tonight, so we also have to take certain precautions, like, like filling up the fresh and not using, like, we don't have a heated hose. We're going to be staying at the Lordsburg KOA. No frills, easy in and out, and tomorrow we're going into Arizona. And the plan is to spend one last night with full hookups before our RV boondocking extravaganza at the Q23 meetup in Quartzsite. This was a Lordsburg KOA. I've been here, this is my third time actually. And uh, I mean, it is a no frills campground. Basically, it's, uh, it's for me, it's kind of like the utilitarian stop right before we get to, to Arizona. Now today we have a four hour drive to, I'm not sure if it is pronounced Gila Bend or Gila Bend, but I have a feeling it's Gila Bend because as you know, many places, especially in Arizona, New Mexico, California, they retain their Spanish pronunciation. Uh, so um, let me know if you know how, how it is uh, pronounced. Oh, we have another, another Micro Mini. That one is not a flex though. Um, in case tomorrow we're going to Quartzsite, as you can see, beautiful weather today, it's perfect. And I think we're gonna break the curse of Quartzsite of the past two times I've been there. Well, he, he, and I think I took the wrong turn, uh, just because I'm talking too much. Uh, we're breaking that curse of Quartzsite being a uh, rainy. There's no rain in the forecast for at least the next 10 days. Uh, but they've been wrong before. Anyway, let's hit the road. Yeah, the area coming in and out of the KOA, not very pretty. Oh 
Arizona, even California. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my kids on 66. The mountains and the desert are my fix. Driving to the west in my RV is where I wanna be. Welcome to Arizona. Oh, thank you. On the next episode, we will visit that great crossroads of the RV lifestyle, where I-10 crosses US-95, and people either love it or hate it. During the summer, it is the last spot to get cheap gas before entering California. During the winter, it is home to over a million snowbirds and nomads who congregate in this valley, taking advantage of the ample public land. Until then, Thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Driving to the west, driving to the west, driving to the west. Riding in my